I have a feeling I'm going to catch a lot of flack for this one, but heck, I'm just going to go ahead and say it, I like this movie. Scratch that, I really enjoyed this movie. Josh here, and as I'm sure you already know, you're watching my review of the sequel to last year's Twilight, rather pompously titled, The Twilight Saga New Moon. And I will reiterate, I really enjoyed this movie. I'll try to explain both my enjoyment of the movie and my thoughts on the series in general throughout the course of this video, as I imagine most people will be wondering why a 20 year old straight male is going to see the Twilight Saga. Firstly, while I won't say it's the best story out there like some, in my opinion greatly overzealous, fans will claim, I will say that I think it's good escape is fun. It's overly melodramatic, it's pulpy and oftentimes silly, but much like other big, and by big I mean financially successful, so mostly blockbusters, which this is, uh, it's, it's just as some big movies are just impossible extrapolations of male fantasies or male-oriented interests, so is New Moon in the Twilight franchise an impossible extension of female fantasies. That is not to say that males cannot enjoy it, as clearly I do, but that they need to be able to sit and watch something without explosions for once. I'm sorry, that's far too critical. They just need to have a romantic side of them that can appreciate a story like this. Because let's face it, that's what the whole, the whole Twilight Saga is mostly just a soap opera with horror elements. That's also not to say that there isn't some cool twist to the specific mytho mythos or particular details aside worth mentioning, but at the end of the day, if you can't tolerate a romantic movie, you will not enjoy this. Sure, the marketing may make it seem like anyone can get into it, but no. Not everyone can. It's just that type of movie. It, and I'm, not talk and I'm talking about the new Moon movie here, delights in pleasing its fans, with many male shirtless scenes and long romantic staring into each other's eyes. You might be asking, What the fuck, Josh? Thought you were going to hate on this movie, fag, gay, insert unoriginal homophobic pun here. Well, you know something? Fuck off. Most of these kinds of scenes are justified in some way within the context of the story, and I figure it's only fair that the level of objectification among males is the same as females. I mean, hell, if we can get a Me or a Megan Fox starring in a two and a half hour movie, getting three quarters naked half the time, figure that math out, and stick her ass up in the air, all but assuming the come hither look, then I guess it's only fair that girls get to see some buff guys topless too. Besides, like I said, the majority of them are justified. Why does the wolf pack roam about the, the reservation shirtless? Because they're training as wolves and their clothes fucking explode off them when they transform, dumbass. The fact that they have pants at all is amazing, really. And really, the majority of these comments strike me as hugely homophobic. Do we not already objectify our male stars in half of the big movies anyway? This is just a natural progression. I don't see what's so, what's so crazy about this. Anyway, now that I've got all that shit out of the way, I can continue like I always do and get to reviewing the movie. To start, for what it is and what I thought, the story was well done. Having read the books, I thought the movie improved on the book in the same way Twilight improved the pacing of the first story. Here we get more Victoria hunting Bella, more Edward throughout, more action, more Vulture, and even some more Carlisle backstory, which is missing in the first movie. Basically, they retain all, or at least most, of the important plot points and beef them up instead of using some backstories as padding. This is a good thing. Despite many critics' complaint about pacing, I thought the movie moved at a really good clip. Granted, it is definitely a very depressing movie, but that is far from a crime. Now, I do have a certain disposition to darker and slower affairs, but, these pe but the people I went with also shared my thoughts on the issue, and as such, I do not suspect it will be a problem for those that may be interested in checking the movie out. Overall, the plot remains the same as the books, but manages to improve in many key areas. For example, I didn't really enjoy the whole of the book, but the movie was a great improvement in my mind. For those not in the know, Edward, after having to protect Bella from a member of his own coven, worries that he will be the death of her, so he feigns an excuse and leaves. In the depression, Bella suffers from this event, she grows closer to her old friend Jacob, who, as it turns out, has his own secrets to hide that I'm sure are rather obvious but from the commercial now. Do not watch this movie before watching the first, because it will all seem entirely arbitrary if you don't. Though, be warned, the first movie is hit or miss, if you catch my drift. The sequel represents a big step up over the previous film, so it might be worth digging into. And it's not terrible, it's just TV quality, I would say. The acting is uh, also kind of hit or miss, hampered by some sometimes preposterous dialogue, this is New Moon I'm talking about now. Robert Pattinson does a good job, better than the last movie, managing to emote once or twice this time around. But no really, he is slightly less stoic, which helps you feel for the character. Kristen Stewart as Bella is also, mercifully, much improved, though her awkwardness still, f still feels forced sometimes, and her oddly clipped eyebrows scare me more than anything else I've yet known. Taylor Lautner as Jacob does a great job, exuding some great screen chemistry and screen presence, no doubt helped by his rather large frame, 
and every time he's on screen, you just, you just get the feeling you like him. The rest of the, the supporting cast plays their jobs suitably. The Cullen clan feels and appears really comfortable in their roles, and for the short time that they're in the movie, they leave a very good impression. Easily picking up the pace right at the beginning of the beginning of the movie, getting you back and drawing into the story. Uh, the rest of the supporting class plays their jobs suitably. Uh, the pack has a way has a ways to go, but Sam was played well, and the rest were good enough. Mike Newton, I can't remember the actor's name. He plays a bigger role in this movie, and while mostly played for comic relief, he does the bit well. Bella's father, Charlie, is again comic gold when he's on screen. You wait for those moments; they do not disappoint. Finally, Michael Sheen as Arrow, the leader of the Vulture, he does a particularly campy slash awesome job, um, seeming like a mix of an evil dictator and pedophile. For those wanting to know about Dakota Fanning, she does a good job with what she has, but she's barely in the movie for what she's advertised in the trailers. Maybe a minute, if that. She doesn't even have that many lines, so, yeah, well. Ah, the dialogue. Well, like I said, a lot of it is taken from the book itself and sounds kind of or really silly, and some of the new stuff added is equally kind of or really silly, but none of it was really awkward, like in the first movie. You're my own personal brand of heroin. That line works on paper, but in the movie it was god downright painful. It was god awful. All the lines here are at least delivered with verve, so even if they're silly, they're played deadpan enough that you're willing to roll with it, so you won't notice too much of it. This also has a lot to do with your mood again, because it wasn't isn't very good dialogue, but it fits the tone of the story, that being a melodrama. Overall, it could be worse. I wasn't too bothered by it. At the very least, we were again saved by the charisma of Taylor Lautner and Jacob. Now, like I mentioned before, the effects and general production are great improvements over the last movie. They finally bust out the steady cams, and the maison scene and stylistic elements of the film are generally more interesting than they were before. For instance, we no longer have that blue filter over everything, which is nice. It was a uh, it was fine for the first movie, I thought, but I don't think I could take an, an entire quadrilogy steeped in that color. I hear some people complain about the CGI, but I didn't have any problems with it. The wolf themselves didn't look amazing, but they looked good, and the running was vastly improved here by the vampires. I mean. The ramped up action scenes in the latter half of the movie really get a chance to show off the new vampire effects and they definitely hold up. The movie also has a few really nice touches such as Jacob steaming in the cold due to his increased blood or body heat and the vampire's wounds being portrayed like cracked stones are literal and a music interpretation of the book's hard as diamonds description of them. The sets were uniformly fantastic, four scenes were much better looking this time around and the town and school looked much more real and Volterra in particular was an astounding bit of staging and design. Whatever you may think about the movie, it was made with a lot of attention to detail. I still say they could have used an increased or yet better CG, or increased budget for yet better CG, but there's not that much to complain about this time around. Still, it's more filmy than Twilight, but frankly, I liked it better this way. Lastly, the music. Now, the soundtrack is by and large great, gathering a good number of indie hits like The Killers, Black Rebel Motorcycle Club, Tom York, and Death Cab for Cutie. And having him write new songs specifically for the film was definitely a cool move and worthwhile as your sonic experience will at least be a pleasant one. You could do a lot worse than having these songs stuck in your head. They're not poppy either, or at least most of them aren't. They're very alternative, very interesting, great soundtrack. That's all there really is to say about it. Even if you aren't a fan of the movie, this is something you could theoretically pick up and enjoy all by itself. The title song, Meet Me on the Equinox, by the aforementioned Death Cab by Cutie in particular, stands out as a highly listenable track. So in conclusion, should you go and see the Twilight Saga New Moon? I would say yes, go and see it. But, only under the stipulation that you know what you're getting into and go into it with the right attitude and expectations. You know what you're going to get when you see the trailer, but I think a lot of people may be surprised by how much they enjoy what they get, or what they think they're going to get. So, go check it out and see for yourself. Want to prove those Tyhards or Twihards wrong? Being dragged along by a significant other? Shy but don't know? Check out check out a matinee for it. It's probably worth it. Oh, and by the way, while my theater was good, if you freaking squee during that movie, or yell, or scream at inappropriate moments, I will find you and I will kill you like Liam Nielsen and take it.